The God who comes to meet us in this parable is a God who in one sense is mad and a God who is at least extravagant and does things which are, it would seem, undignified. I mean, the, the younger son has prepared his return home speech very carefully, word by word. He's got it all off pat. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy, note the word, to be called your son. And the father, in fact, before he even utters the prayer, runs down the drive to meet him. I mean, this is, this is mad. The God who runs to meet us and who shatters all conventional logic in that moment the most undignified an oriental thing an oriental elder could do. And then when the boy starts the speech, the father cuts him off. As soon as the son says, I am no longer worthy to be called your son, the, the, the father says, stop, 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 stop. Why? Because for the father, for God, it's never a matter of being worthy. You are my son, not because you're worthy, but because you are my son. So, so that's, that's the first thing you see about the God who, who cuts him short. This is a God who shatters the logic of worthiness. Now, the two boys look very dissimilar, but in fact they're incredibly and pathetically alike. Because the older boy comes in from the field and he says, I have been with you, I, all I've, do I, I've done everything you asked, I've earned your love. In other words, like the younger brother, he's caught in the pigsty of worthiness. So the two boys are here locked in the world of those to whom Jesus is speaking. A world of thinking that they have to prove themselves worthy and that therefore sinners and tax collectors are beyond the pale of love. But in fact now the younger son has to make a decision. The decision is will I do it all over again and we don't know. But that's a decision we have to make too. Forgiveness gives us the freedom to do it all over again. And this is a God who is utterly respective of freedom. The older boy has to decide whether to come into the party or not. He can stay outside, locked in a world or a prison of resentment, or he can come into the feast. In fact, the father wants us to come into the feast. And those wonderful words, my son, you are with me always, and all I have is yours, are words spoken to us. So the, the key decision is, do we want to be a son, or do we want to be a slave? The slave stays forever in the pigsty, and the son, who comes home, also comes to the feast for which we were created.